Hi everyone and welcome to another video from Colour with Claire. Today we're going to be filling in a blend chart together. Now a blend chart enables you to take just 12 different coloured pencils and create 144 different colours with them. So it's great for those of you who are on a budget who might have the smaller pencil sets, whether that's just a 12 set of the supermarket brand pencils or Crayola or whether you've bought a 12 set of some really good pencils like Polychromos and Prismas. Whatever, whichever way you do it, whatever pencil brand you're using, uh, it's a really inexpensive way of expanding all of the colours that you can use and that will be at your disposal for colouring pages. So this particular chart was put together by Kim White from Creative Happy Life and if you've been watching my channel for a while you will know that I absolutely love Kim, I love her work, everything she puts out there whether it's in her colouring books and the you know the beautiful illustrations she does or whether it's the colouring resources that she sells on Etsy, um, everything's been done with such care and consideration for the colourist and things that we would find really helpful. So, for example, this blend chart is actually part of Kim's Colouring Companion, which is available on her Etsy right now for around £14. And it includes not just this blend chart, but so many other resources that will just organise and just completely transform your, your colouring process. So, with the blend chart, you'll also get swatch sheets so that you can swatch out all of your different coloured pencil brands now obviously with this being a pdf bundle you can print them out as many times as you like so if you've got 10 different brands of coloured pencils you print them off 10 times uh, there's combo trackers so if you've got some really really good prisma colour combinations for example you can track them all on this one sheet there's also a colour tracker so if you're doing a work in progress at the moment that you have to leave alone you don't want to forget which colours you're using you can track it on this there's also skin tone practice sheets with little faces on that you can put down different skin tones that you have um, that you've seen or that you've put together yourself and just track them, keep them in a folder. There's also hair, lips and gemstones in the same vein. She also has a mandala themed notes page that again you can print out as many times as you like, do a bit of colouring, make a few notes. Uh, there's a wish list so you can print this out write down all of those wonderful coveted colouring supplies that you're after at the moment and keep track of those. There's a Facebook group tracker. So if you, like me, are a member of loads of different colouring Facebook groups, you'll know that every single one has different rules and it's very, very hard to keep up with what you're allowed to post and when. And that's what the Facebook group tracker is for, so that you can write out all of the groups you're a part of and all of their rules. She also has included a book inventory, so you can write down all the colouring books you own and keep track of those. There's a YouTuber tracker, so you can write down all your favourite YouTubers, hopefully I'll be on there. <laughs> and you can write down maybe your favourite videos of theirs, keep track of the uh, schedule, so the live stream schedule, so you don't forget when they're going live. And there's also a monthly planner, so that you can... Just plan all, all of your life outside of colouring, but then see where you can fit colouring into your life. Um, basically, it's just this huge packet of amazing resources that I don't think any colourist should be without, really. And the best part is that you'll get free updates for life. So once you've bought the colouring companion set, any more sheets and trackers and charts that Kim thinks up, you'll get access to those for, for no extra cost. So now that I've dumped loads of information on you, <laughs> let's get into actually doing the blend chart. So when you receive this um, and you print it out, it'll be completely blank. So the pink and the purple here is what I've written in myself um, and the rest of it is what will be printed out. So you can print it as many times as you like with all different mediums. So for this particular one, we're going to be using polychromos today. So I'm going to write polychromos up here in the medium box. and then you can get started. So the 12 polychromos that I've picked out from my set are the 12 that you will receive if you buy the 12 set from Amazon or wherever. So I've made sure that I've got the exact 12 pencils that you would get if you had the 12 polychromos. Now I've got these pencils printed out here so you can see and I'm hoping that this is gonna focus. So if you wanna pause that, and see which ones are in the 12 set this is the exact colors that i'm going to be using so you can pause that and jot them down now 
blend charts can be a little bit confusing at the start because you don't really know which colours to put down first and how to lay them down but Kim's made it super easy because she's labelled the vertical axis bottom and the horizontal axis top so you know that these colours here will always be the base layer the bottom layer and you put those on first so what we're going to do is we're going to fill in all of those bottom layers that's what I that's this is how I do it you might find a different way of doing it I know that Kim's done her own video link in the description for prismas and she's done it slightly differently to how I'm doing it so you know do it however you think but this is how I'm going to do it so I've got the white here and we'll fill in this box with white obviously you can't see this but uh, that's the white bottom layer and then of course you've got the white on the top as well so you don't really need to do anything there <laughs> it's just white then you've got a cadmium yellow so I'm filling this in now this is going to be the bottom layer of all of this so you can fill in all of your cadmium yellows now where it meets the other cadmium yellow here just do a double layer so that it shows you um, it shows you that what it looks like when they're layered on top of each other it's different it's the tonal values isn't it so I'm just going to go straight across with the cadmium yellows. I'm not pressing hard. I'm just doing one soft light layer. And with polychromos anyway, you can't you can't go in there and burnish hard on your first layer. It just won't work. So you know that you're going to want to put another color on top, so don't do it really hard. Leave yourself you know some some tooth on the paper to layer your colors so I should have really put white all the way across first shouldn't I but I jumped into the yellow so I'm going to do that quickly so we've got white all over here which is the bottom layer now I don't really want to speed this up um, because I want to do it in real time so that you can see where every color is being laid down very very clearly as I say it can get quite confusing so as long as you just follow where Kim has said these are all bottom layers and then do them as the bottom layer you'll be absolutely fine so the next one on the list is dark cadmium orange so again just a nice light layer and then where you meet the same color dark cadmium orange again just do another layer so do that all the way across and again it's up to you how you lay your pencils on the page as well you could do a scumbling technique I'm just doing it in this kind of zigzag diagonal fashion next color is deep scarlet red so remember that you can always speed up this video or you can skip ahead to when we start layering the the top colors over you don't have to sit and watch me do all this but if you do want to that's why I'm leaving it as real time so we've met deep scarlet red here again so we'll do a second layer Now I know when Kim did hers, she filled in the top row and this first column and then did a diagonal down here. Um, if you want to do it that way, absolutely go for it. Again, it just depends on what you find easier. I find it easy to keep track of doing all of the bottom layer first. I just think it's, um, it's just easier for my brain <laughs> to keep up with and I'm not going to get confused. which, you know, it's very easy to confuse me. <laughs> right, so that's the deep scarlet red. Then got the magenta. Then 
double layer it here where it meets it itself and you can see almost the the diagonal effect of where you've double layered and how it looks quite different but as you filled it in it will become almost like magic just this huge swathe of loads and loads of different mid-tones and colours that you would never have imagined that you could create with just 12 pencils. And as I say, it has been done before. It's not a new idea. It's not a new thing. But I think that every colourist should have a go at this. It's really therapeutic as well. You know, it takes it takes a little while for you to build up the chart. But it's I love charting anyway. I love swatching different brands and you know it takes all of the the, uh, the thought out of everything you know when you have to be thinking of colors and what are you going to use on this page doing a bit of swatching it just it's completely mindless isn't it so that was a double gone over the line but that's fine So I'd really like to know whether you've completed one of these blend charts before and what different coloured pencil brands or even marker brands you've used um, to create loads of different colours. I think it'd be fantastic done with alcohol markers especially because they're a translucent medium. So I think they'd layer up really, really nicely. So I'm really interested to know if you have done this before, what mediums you've used, whether you've used paint watercolour paint is quite transparent so that would probably work really well as well So the next colour is emerald green. Now I did mention that this blend chart is part of Kim's um, colouring companion set on Etsy, but it's also part of this month's Creative Happy Life Club subscription. So as I mentioned, I did a review of Kim's Creative Happy Life Club, which is her subscription club. It's a VIP club. You pay a monthly fee and Kim releases a new illustration drawn just for the club every single month. She also has illustrator interviews with other artists who also give away some of their work to the club members. So you can get, you know, quite a few different um, colouring pages every month to print out. If you include Kim's and the ones given away by the artists. She also includes things like other resources like calendars that you can print out and colour in. Resources like this, blend charts and all of the other things that we mentioned earlier. She also does um, different challenges for you every month. And basically she's just so, so generous with the content that she puts out and it really, really is worth joining if you've been, you know, thinking about it and if you've watched my video and you've wanted to have a join but you've not got round to it yet, it really, really is worth it. As I've said, she puts in so much effort and thought and consideration into everything she puts out. So to support her in her venture, it really is, you know, helping helping a young mum in her business and you're getting, you know, far and away value from it, far and away. But as I've said, all the links for these different things will be in the description. It might be that you don't want to commit to a monthly subscription, even though you can cancel it any time. Uh, you just want to get the colouring companion for a one-off fee. 
and you can do that. So not a problem. All the links will be in the description. So I've met light green again here. So we'll do a double layer. Next, we've got burnt ochre. Do a double layer on that one, I almost forgot. We're almost there, so next is Walnut Brown. So, as I said, it's, it's a great opportunity for those of us on a budget to expand the colours that we have to use. Now, even if um, you don't have a set at the moment and you're just looking at this video and wanting to get into the hobby and thinking how you can do it cheaply but also um, using materials that are high quality this is how i do it so a 12 set of pretty much any pencil whether that's crayola or polychromos is going to be fairly in inexpensive you know obviously polychromos are going to be more expensive than a set of crayola but for a 12 set of anything you're not looking at spending hundreds are you so it really really helps for those of us who want to get started in the hobby and we want a good quality supply to use but we don't have a lot of money to chuck at it i think a, a tin of 12 polychromos is about 17 pounds on amazon so you're getting top quality pencils that artists use and generally known as one of the best colored pencil brands for a fairly inexpensive price and, and still getting tons of colours out of it. So we come to black now, our final colour. Again, I'm not going to be pressing hard, we're just filling it in with a light layer. And I'm sure you'll do it a lot neater than me as well and spend a bit more time on it. But I am aware of taking too long and just wanting to keep the demonstration as succinct as I possibly can. And so we have our final double layer here at the end. There we go. Now then, the fun begins. So we've put down our base layer of all of the different colours. Now what I'm going to do to uh, make it easier is I'm going to turn it around. Hopefully this will make it easier <laughs> because now we're looking at these and these are our top colors. So white on white, we've already done. Now we need to add some cadmium yellow to this white. So you take your cadmium yellow and you go over your white. And I'm gonna do it all the way across, exactly the same fashion as we did it that way but we're, we're using these colours this time. So I'm sticking with the cadmium yellow and I'm going all the way down here. So I'm layering the cadmium yellow on top of all of the colours that we've put down. Okay, now we move on to our next colour, which is the dark cadmium orange. We'll put that over the white first of all. And then over the yellow. We've already done a double layer on itself, so we'll move to the deep scarlet red. 
magenta, light ultramarine, the phyllo blue, emerald green, light green, burnt ochre, walnut brown and black. And that's what I'm going to do, just keep doing it across and we'll see how the chart turns out at the end. So deep scarlet red. You can see that deep scarlet red over white looks very different to uh, just normal deep scarlet red. It's a much lighter shade. So layering over white will always, quite it's quite obvious really, it's common sense. It will give you a lighter tone or a lighter tint of that colour. Now I've already done that one, that's a double layer, that's fine. Now move on to magenta. Now yet again, I've forgotten to do the white column, haven't I? But you're shouting at me now. We'll go back to that in a second. Just want to finish this row so we don't get confused. So we've got white as the bottom layer, haven't we? All the way over here. Now the bottom layer here on the vertical axis or well, horizontal and now you're looking at it this way is just the the color on its own isn't it so we need to put the white as the top layer don't we and see how different that looks to having the white on the bottom so let's put our white over the top of this row just as we have been doing with the other colors it's just that once again i forgot to do the white one and then we'll do a bit of a comparison see how different colours look when they have white on top rather than on the bottom. Okay, so for example, we have the uh, deep scarlet red here that we just did on top of the white base layer. Here we've got a deep scarlet red base layer with a white top layer and you can just see the difference. So it, it, you're not having duplicates of the same colour across the whole chart, which is what you might have been worried about. They are going to look different whether you put the white on the top or the bottom. Now we've got magenta. Again, I keep forgetting the white, let's not do that. And it's just really nice to see as you're doing the chart how the different colours build up and how the chart looks at the end you'll know what I mean when I get there but this whole uh, notion of mixing them and um, having the ability to create all of these different tones it's, it's fantastic it really is Next is the light ultramarine. Done that one. Then we have the phyllo blue, not long now before we're done.
emerald green, one of my favourite um, polychromos colours, emerald green. light green all of the polychromos colors are gorgeous actually i don't think there's any color in the polychromos set that i don't like they've really chosen their palette well right across the 120 set Can you see how different this is layering the light green on top of the emerald green uh, as opposed to when we layered the emerald green on top of the light green you can just see the difference i think this would look so much better as well if i'd have filled in the entire square rather than just do a swatch across it but of course you can do that now that you've got more time uh, next we have burnt ochre so yeah you'll have more time to work on it and you're only gonna have to do it once unless you want to do it for every single pencil set that you own so it's it's worth um, taking your time and getting it looking really nice for you to put away maybe you have a, a folder a plastic wallet type of deal you know where you keep all of your different PDFs and, and colouring swatch charts and things. And this is just another addition that you can put in there. Second to last is the Walnut Brown. massive difference between this and this isn't there i think layering the white on top it gives it a, a smoother softer more burnished look so you're getting more kind of color saturation over here when the white's on the bottom and then when the white's over the top it's it's more desaturated but it's a lot smoother Finally, we've got the black. So how does this go on on top of the white? It's interesting actually to layer black on top of different colors and see how it changes it. Because you would think black is, you know, the most opaque and the, opaque and the darkest and heaviest of colors. Okay, so that is our chart complete. Let's have a look at it right way around. 
Now you can see just all of the different uh, effects that you've created, the different mid-tone shades and uh, tints that we've created just by layering the colours on top of each other. So you've got a whole collection of earthy browns down here, loads of different shades of green. Um, you know, we've got more purples here in this section. Um, and there's not even a purple included in the 12 set. You've got your magenta, that's about as close as you get into a purple. But you can see that there are different purples that you've created in here already. Um, earthy tones, landscape, just all different, all different colours that you can use that are at your disposal now. Now what I would do just to finish off is I would grab some blending solution. Specifically, if you are using a harder pencil like Polychromos, Prismacolors, you might not need to blend it so much because uh, they seem to sort of blend themselves. But because we're using Polychromos, I'm just going to have a bit of blending solution. I'm dipping my brush in. I'm just going to put a little bit over each, um, each swatch. So we'll just do that quickly. And what that does is it breaks down the wax in the pencil, which just leaves you with beautiful rich pigment and it blends it a lot better for you so but you can leave it with the kind of rough texture completely up to you So there we are, it's all blended nicely together now and it's ready for me to put away in my folder to check and look back on every time I want to try and create some different shades and tones out of very, very small limited number of pencils. So I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, as I've said, the link to buy the chart within the colouring companion from Kim White will be in the description. Uh, any questions just ask, I always love to hear from you. So please do comment. Let me know if this is something you've done yourself or something that you're planning on doing. And uh, thank you so, so much for watching. I'll see you soon on Colour with Claire.